I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue um, solving problems um, for inverse trigonometric functions. Um, this is the second lecture dedicated to these problems. Problems are very simple. I do suggest you to do it yourself first and only then listen to the lecture. And, um, well, basically, this lecture would be very much like the previous one. I'll just change slightly the, uh, the arguments and the functions. But again, the purpose is to evaluate uh, the value of the um, inverse trigonometric function. All right, without further ado, let's do it. Arc cosine of sine of 3 pi over 2. So, what we need right now is two functions, actually. One function is sine, another function is cosine, and then we will have to, then we will have to inverse the cosine. So first, let's evaluate this. So 3 pi over 2 function sine is this one. So it's 0 pi, 2 pi. So 3 pi over 2 is where the function is equal to minus 1. So this is minus 1. That's done. Evaluate. Now, what's the arc cosine of this? Well, let's think about the graph of the arc of cosine. First, graph of the cosine is this one. From 0 to uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, etc. So, we have to concentrate on the area where the cosine is inversible. And this is the area where the cosine is monotonic. And the, the one which traditionally is chosen is from 0 to pi, which is this piece. So the question is, within this area, where the cosine equals to minus 1? Obviously, it's pi. So the angle cosine of which is equal to minus 1 within this boundaries is pi. So this is equal to pi. Next. Arc sine of cosine of minus pi. So again, it's two steps. First, the variating cosine of minus pi. Now the cosine was this. This is 0, pi over 2, pi. So minus pi, this is minus pi, minus pi over 2. So the value of the cosine at minus 1, at minus pi, is minus 1. So I have to find arc sine of minus 1. Now, now let's talk about what's the arc sine look like. The graph of the sine is this one. The area where the sine is monotonic is this one, from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So only within these boundaries, we have to look for an angle sine of which is equal to minus 1. So what is this angle? Obviously, it's minus pi over 2. That's the, that's the answer. Minus pi. 
Okay, tangent of minus pi. Well, tangent is, I don't really have to do it uh, with a graph. I think I can do it mentally. Tangent is sine over cosine. Now, sine of minus pi uh, is equal to zero. So tangent is equal to zero. Cosine is something else, minus one or something. Uh, so it's zero. Now, so where is the, the, the arc cotangent of zero? So which angle has a cotangent equal to zero? But not any angle. We need an angle from uh, the range of the function uh, arc cotangent. So let's just draw the cotangent first. And I do remember it looks like this. That's the area of where it's monotonic. So from 0 to pi is the, the range of the angles we have to really uh, evaluate our function arc cotangent. So which one of those uh, where the tangent is equal to well, the cotangent is equal to zero. The cotangent of this should be equal to zero. Well, obviously it's this point. It's pi over two. So that's the answer. So I deliberately did not draw the other branches of function uh, cotangent because they are outside of the area where the inverse function is defined. Inverse is defined only from zero to pi. Next, arc tangent of cotangent of 3 pi over 2. Okay, now I just draw the cotangent, I'll just re I'll repeat it. Okay, that's how it was from 0 to pi. But now we need another branch of the cotangent because we are looking for 3 pi over 2, which is here. So this is equal to 0. Now I have to find an angle tangent of which is equal to 0 tangent, but this is arc tangent, right? So I have to find an angle tangent of which is equal to zero, but this angle should belong to the area where the tangent is inversible. Now tangent is inversible, I'll use the same graph actually. Tangent is inversible from minus pi to pi. This is the tangent branch where we are considering arc tangent in that inverse function. So. Where exactly is equal to zero? Well, obviously it's this point where the angle is equal to zero. So the answer to this is zero. Okay. Two more. Arc secant of secant of minus 2 pi. Arc secant of, sorry, arc cosecant of secant of minus 2 pi. All right. Now, secant is 1 over cosine, right? Um, 2 pi is a period of the cosine. So the cosine of minus 2 pi is the same as the cosine of 0, right? I just add 2 pi, the period, to the argument. And cosine of 0, we do remember what it is. It's 1. So this is 1. Now let's talk about cosecant. Cosecant is 
1 over sine. So let's draw the graph. Now, sine is equal to 0 at 0 pi, 2 pi, minus pi. Etc. So, 1 over uh, sine, which is the cosecant, would be obviously this. So, where exactly the function is monotonic, the, the cosecant? Well, we have traditionally put it from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And these two branches, this one and this one, constitute the piece of the cosecant where it's inversible. So we have to find an angle from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, cosecant of which is equal to 1. And obviously it's this one, this point. This is 1. So it's pi over 2. Result is pi over 2. That's the answer. That's the angle, the cosecant of which is equal to 1, which is the secant of minus 2 pi. And the last problem in this series arc secant of cosecant. Arc secant of uh, cosecant. of minus 3 pi over, over 2. OK. So let's start with uh, the cosecant. Cosecant of minus 3 pi over 2. Again, let's just think about it. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Period, period is 2 pi, obviously. So if I will add 2 pi to this argument, nothing's changed. I add 2 pi to minus 3 pi over 2, I will have pi over 2. So it's the same as cosecant of pi over 2. Now, 1 over sine of pi over 2. Now, sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, right? Remember? One. So 1 over would be 1 as well. So this is 1. Now let's talk about secant. Secant is 1 over cosine, right? So let's do the cosine. Cosine is this. 0 pi over 2 pi. So this is the area of monotonicity, monotonic behavior of the cosine. So we have to find our angle from 0 to pi. Now, the graph of the uh, secant would be this. So that's where we have to really look for the value of 1. So where exactly within these boundaries uh, there is an angle secant of which is equal to 1? Well, obviously it's this point, right? So it's angle is equal to 0 and the secant is, is 1. So the answer to this is 0. Well, that's it for this particular set of problems. Um, I do suggest you to go to unisor.com to this lect to notes for this lecture. That's where you have all the problems and, and answers actually as well. And try to do it yourself using basically the same technique. 
Well, other than that, thank you very much and goodbye.